Hey everybody. So a friend of mine has a large collection of vintage hi-fi gear, um, including pieces that are in unknown condition and haven't been powered on by him yet. Um, he is familiar with my dim bulb tester and the general purpose of it and asked me how I built it. Um, there are a lot of videos on YouTube on it already. Um, there's some that get more into the theory. I'm not going to cover that here. Um, and a lot of the videos are from people in Europe or they're from people that have more complicated designs, right? So in this video, I'm going to show you how I built my dim bulb tester, which is a very basic design using parts that you can walk into Lowe's or Home Depot and um, build today. Um, in this case, everything was purchased at a Lowe's. Um, and the other thing that we'll cover in the video is your options for purchasing incandescent light bulbs in the United States in 2023. As many of you know, the government banned the majority of incandescent light bulbs, but there's still a bunch of specialty bulbs that you can purchase both in the store and from suppliers online. And just a little disclaimer here, if you're not familiar with or comfortable with working with electricity involving line voltages, uh, don't build this. Um, do your own research and I'm sharing this video just as my experience in building one of these for me. Okay, let's take a look at our shopping list. The first thing you're going to need is these um, ground screws. You only actually need one of them. Unfortunately, the smallest pack you can get is 12. Um, you're also going to need one of these cable clamps for pipe NM cable. It's just a standard 3 8 inch clamp that is commonly used in residential wiring. Um, and I am aware that there are better options, strain reliefs and things like that, that you should use to put an extension cord into a metal box. But the purpose of this video is to talk about building one using things that you can buy at a retail store. And those other um, strain reliefs are not something that they stock at Lowe's or Home Depot. And they're actually kind of expensive too. Um, so we won't cover them here. This, this does the job just fine. Um, you're also going to need a two gang metal box. And what you want to be careful of on these boxes, because they have a few different styles, um, you want to make sure that it has the two screws on the corner for the faceplate. Um, so that's how the faceplate attaches. And I also suggest you see this little bump here in the bottom right. Um, that's raised up. That's where the ground screw is going to go. Uh, some boxes, especially older ones, the ground screw just went under the back, which was flat. And um, since we're going to be setting this on a table, we really don't want that because the screw would be hitting the table. Um, you're also going to want a two-gang uh, square metal box cover with a switch and a receptacle hole in it. Um, you're going to need a regular 15 amp light switch. You're going to need a standard 15 amp outlet. I would suggest spending the extra two dollars and getting the commercial style outlet. They're much nicer than the 75 cent outlets. Um, you're also going to need this. It's a light socket that has a plug on it and that's going to plug into one of the outlets on the tester. Um, and there's two things in the parts list that you need that I don't have in my cart here because um, one of them is going to be depending on your application. That's the incandescent bulb of the wattage that you decide you need. And the other one is the um, cord. Now, there's many different ways to go about the extension cord. You could, you could buy an extension cord and cut the end off, but I was looking at Lowe's and they started about 12 bucks, so might not be the best option. You can also buy a plug end and a piece of cord from the bulk section. Um, and But what I'm going to do in the video is I'm going to use an old computer power cord and chop the end off. All right, let's take a look at how I've got this wired. The first thing you want to do is break this tab off on both sides of your receptacle. Um, normally you break that off when you want to switch them independently or have one that's hot and the other one that's switched when you're using this in building wiring. Okay, very important. Don't skip that step. Um, next thing you're going to want to do is identify which is hot and which is neutral on your power cord. On my power cord, brown is hot and blue is neutral. Um, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to connect the hot from the power cord to the switch. Um, it's good practice to switch hot. And then you're going to go from the other lug on the switch to the top hot connection, which is the darker colored brass terminal, on your receptacle. Um, then you're going to want to go from the neutral over to the bottom hot using a jumper wire. And then you go out using the other neutral back to your cord. Um, you also want to make sure to ground the switches. So the first time you plug this in after assembling it, um, make sure to plug it into a GFCI protected outlet in case you screwed something up. Um, and what we'll do is I've got one of these outlet testers here and uh, if you look at the chart on it, if it's correct it should light up these two neon tubes on the right. Um, 
And the benefit of wiring it the way that I did it is that no matter which outlet the bulb is in or which one the tester's in, they'll both show that they're wired correctly. Whereas if you follow some of the other videos on YouTube where they only break the tab on one side and don't have the jumper wire, um, one of the outlets will be reversed, which is not ideal. So let's see what happens. All right, and it lit up perfectly. So the wire outlet's wired correctly. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you what to expect when you turn the dim bulb tester on when you have a healthy device plugged into it. This is a really small Technix SA5200 stereo receiver. So we're not gonna see much. Um, I've already turned the power switch on the receiver on, so take a look at the bulb. Just a quick glow when the capacitors charge and then it dims right down. Okay, and for the next demonstration, I've got a Technix SA300 on the bench that somebody blew the SDK modules in and decided to bypass the speaker protect fuses with a pair of wires, so this thing's all sorts of messed up. As you can see, it flashed brightly and it stayed fairly bright. Um, and I'm not going to demonstrate it, but on this one, if I was to connect a speaker load to it and enable the speaker output, it would get even brighter. Um, so, not good. All right, let's talk about light bulbs. As most of you know, in the United States this year, they banned the majority of incandescent bulbs. However, there's still quite a few you can get, um, including things like appliance bulbs, traffic signal bulbs, bug lamps, heat lamps, and some other things. Um, and as far as choosing a bulb for your dim bulb tester, it really depends on the load that you're connecting to it. Um, if you're doing something like an um, old All-American 5 radio, you might want to use a 25 or a 40 watt bulb. If you're working on a vintage hi-fi receiver, you know, like a 1970s Marantz or Pioneer, uh, something similar to that, you probably start with a 60 or 100 watt bulb. I usually leave a 100 watt bulb in my tester most of the time. Um, you can also get some higher bulb, higher wattage bulbs depending on what you're doing. Um, you know, with a 60 or 100 watt bulb on a hi-fi receiver, you can use that to initially power it on after you've repaired it to make sure that there's no issues. Um, but if you want to turn the volume up a little bit, you'll find that the bulb is going to light up. So you might want to put a two or 300 watt bulb in there um, until you're confident that the thing is stable. Um, so I keep a 200, 200 and 300 watt bulb in my drawer. Um, and, you know, in the theme of this video, I was only going to talk about things that you can go to Lowe's or Home Depot and buy today without having to special order or anything. So let's take a look here. Um, the first bulb you can get, you can get you can get this in 25 and 40 watt. It's an appliance bulb, like for your oven or your microwave or something like that. Uh, those are still available. Um, you can get bug lamps in 60 watt. They're just regular bulbs, but they're yellow. They're not outlawed. You can also get... Um, 100 watt bulbs in this globe format. Um, unfortunately, 100 watt is kind of the most difficult one to get your hands on locally right now. Um, this is, from what I could tell, almost your only option. And this will work, but if you look at the thing, it's huge. So, I mean, chances of this thing breaking are pretty good. Um, so it's definitely not ideal. Um, let's see here. Another one um, in the 100 watt range is this 125 watt heat lamp. And then for the 200 watt bulb, now they still had this one in the store when I was there. I also checked Home Depot, um, 200 watt General Electric bulb. I'm not sure why it's saying it's no longer sold, so they might be removing it from the store. I'm not sure. Um, and they also have this 300 watt bulb. Now the best kept secret in bulbs are traffic signal bulbs. Um, unfortunately, they're kind of hard to get um, locally, but you can get them on Amazon. And I've included some affiliate links in the description to the video if you want to buy them. Um, they're made by Sylvania. And what's nice about these bulbs is they're rated to 8,000 hours, whereas a standard incandescent bulb was always 1,000 hours. Um, so that you can get this 69-watt bulb. Now, it's 69 watts, but it's actually a 130-volt bulb. So when you plug that into a 120-volt outlet, you're actually getting yourself a 60-watt bulb. Um, so they've got the 60 watt bulb and they've also got the same bulb in um, 116 watts but again it ends up being 100 watts when you lower it to 120 volts um, these are what i use they're really nice as long as i don't break them they should last forever 
And of course, you can build a more complicated dim bulb tester. You may want to check out X-Ray Tony B's YouTube channel. I think he might have a video on the bulb tester he built where he has several bulbs, I believe, wired in parallel with switches and meters and things. So you could you could basically get a whole bunch of 40-watt bulbs and um, increase the um, capacity with switches or something like that as you need it, which would be nice, but much more complicated.